Okay, let's take a look at how we direct character animation in MovieZoo. I'd usually describe this as easy, but we've given it the tricky uh, rating just now because we're going to cover quite a lot of ground. Before watching this tutorial, it would really help you a lot if you looked at the one which described the animation overview. Because in that tutorial, I describe the whole process of animating in passes and mood based animation. If you can get your head around that, then that will make this a lot easier. Anyway, I'd like to start with uh, a quick refreshing of the mood based animation system in MovieZoo. So characters can be animated in these sorts of moods. Happy, sad, angry, scared, evil, wobbly and fighting. But that isn't the whole story because we also have a music mood which operates a little bit differently and um, there's a separate case study tutorial where I can show you how to animate a character to play a musical instrument. But nonetheless, those are all the moods right there that MovieZoo supports. Now, let's also talk about this categorization. So within each mood, or within most of the moods, you have this sort of breakup of the animations that you can do. We've got idles, poses, subtles and strongs. Idles is when the character is basically doing nothing except breathing and uh, staying alive. Poses go along with conversations. So if your character is delivering dialogue, you'll find that poses are pretty good for hitting those points of emphasis in the dialogue. Subtles and strongs are linked <clears throat> more closely with the mood uh, that's getting played. So a subtle, happy animation might be like a weight shift, moving from foot to foot, whereas a strong, happy animation might be the character laughing. Equally so, a strong, scared animation might be the character collapsing into a fearful ball, whereas a subtle one might just be a gentle look over the shoulders. It gets a little different when we get down to fighting. Um, fighting, instead of calling poses, subtles and strongs, we've got attacks, dodges and impacts. Um, I'd encourage you to go and look at the case study for fighting to work out how that goes. Anyway, let's head over to MovieZoo and I'll explain how we go about character animation. So the first thing we're going to need is a character and for this let's pick the boy character. Now I'm going to declutter him a little bit. Uh, I'm going to take the thing off his neck and the, the belt off his waist and feet, the laces off his feet as well. Let's see what else has he got. He's got something on his wrist, um, two arms, left arm, none. Okay, so that's him decluttered. So the mood-based animation system in MovieZoo affects pretty much everything that you want to do with character animation. As soon as a character is in a mood, in this case, happy, his eyes are happy, his body's happy, his animations are happy, and his eyebrows are happy. And also when it comes to animation, or direction, um, it's the same as anything else. You first of all have to prepare character actions before you then go and direct character actions. Let's go and see what that means. So, we want to animate this character. Let's go to prepare character actions. What comes up is our animation panel. And while it's in a prepare mode, this is entirely customizable. You can remove animations as they appear or you can add extra ones. You've got three pages, all with different moods on them. So on page one we've got happy and angry. Page 2 we've got sad and fighting and on page 3 we've got the scared stuff plus the ability to sit the character down or stand him up. Also in this dialogue box you have this initial state where you can choose the character's initial mood and also their initial posture. So let's go and see what MovieZoo does if you don't change this at all. So let's go to direct character actions. The time recorder comes up just as always and we go record, get the countdown and then we start triggering some poses. So let's look at some examples. If you hit happy idle it returns the character to his idle state. Poses are all these kind of gestural stuff, gestural things that go along with conversation. 
a movie zoo straight out of the box produces random choices from a bank of animations, which I'll show you later. Subtle stuff is all to do with little incidental movements, rocking back and forth on your feet, looking at your nails, scratching your hair, and strong happy is like delight and laughter and glee and all that kind of stuff. The same is true, let's pick another mood. Let's go to sad. So to put the character in a sad mood would hit his idle state. There he goes. He again can hit poses which will go along with some sad dialogue. Some sad subtle stuff. And sad strong actions. On page 3 is the ability to change the character's posture. To make him sit down or stand up. And that's pretty much it. Let's stop that and rewind and go and look at the timeline for the character. So you can see with the character chip selected, here's his movement track right here, actions. And you can see all the little animations that we called and any one of these can be moved around and adjusted in the timeline. You can move them things in front of the other, um, you can adjust the timings. If you right click on any of these events you can accurately determine the start and end point. Uh, what else can we do in here? Oh yes, let me show you. Let's uh, show you some of the past based stuff. So let's say that we're happy with this first section. Okay, This first section right here we're happy with. But from this point onwards we're not happy with the performance. Then what we can do is we can scrub along to that point. We can direct some more character actions. Now what this is going to do is this is going to overwrite everything that is beyond this point in the timeline. So we'd hit record and this time we'll trigger one strong angry animation. Let's stop that and go and look at the timeline. Look what it's done. It's inserted a strong animation right there which if we move this out of the way we can probably scrub through and see happening. The stuff in the future has all been preserved, all this stuff has all been preserved, but the few actions that this tantrum replaced have now been deleted. If you want to get rid of everything on a track, rewind and hit the delete bin button. Okay, so that's what MovieZoo does if you don't make any changes. If you go to direct character actions, you get some preloaded moods, and by clicking on them, MovieZoo makes some random choices. What if you wanted more control than that? Well, you would go to prepare character actions. Let's say you wanted to load the evil mood which doesn't come preloaded on this dialog box. Well, you can choose to overwrite any one of these uh, options that movies has already got provided for you or you can add them into these none options right here. I'm going to overwrite the angry stuff. So, uh, into this box we'll go to evil idle and choose that. See we got a little um, we get a little preview of what's going to happen. Let's put that in there. Uh, into this, I'll load in Evil Idle Subtles. I'll just keep it on random. Okay. Into here, I'll put in Evil Strong Randoms. And into this one, I'll put some Evil Poses Random. So what we've effectively done here is loaded a whole new mood into MovieZoo. The Idles, Poses, Subtles and Strongs of the Evil Mood. But you can have more control than that. Into this option, I can say, right, I want evil pose and I want a specific one. I want conversational too. You can see that it loads that into that box. So that when you come to direct and hit record, you can either live with MovieZoo's random choices or we can trigger conversational too stop that there. But what if you wanted even more control than that? What if you wanted to bypass MovieZoo's mood based system entirely? Well that's up to you but what we do have if we if I close all this down let's go back here what we do have is in the prepare character actions box let's start changing some of these and let's go to a page one on. So this one right here none. I'm going to load an animation into that slot you can see that we've got the moods right here, happy, sad, angry, scared, blah, 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 
guitar, bass, keyboard, all the music stuff. Right at the bottom we've got themes. And down in themes we've got a whole bunch of categories uh, of moods. So we've got stuff that would suit a boardroom. Um, let's see the preview. Hands clasped. A lot of these are sitting down animations. Um, what we've got? React. React. Oh, these are the things that come from the character builder. We've got spooky stuff. Fall into grave. You know, etc. So we've got a whole bunch. We've got actually got thousands of um, animations here that are not all about mood. So I'm sure that you can find sort of dancing stuff and uh, pirate stuff and all, all the kind of animations that you like. And I'd also go and look at some of the MovieZoo moguls on their website, MovieZoo.com, and see how they use the animations. They can sometimes pull things from categories that you don't expect, and they make sense when the character's delivering dialogue. Okay, let's cancel that. Okay, let me show you how actions interfere with movement now. We've got a whole tutorial about character movement, and you, you should watch that for a full explanation. Let's bring up the timeline and make sure that this guy's got nothing recorded for him. Delete that lot there. Okay, and now let's go ahead and delete and direct some character actions. Now I'm going to go and find the evil stuff and record some of those. I'm going to record some evil poses. And a fifth and final pose. If I then put movement over the top of that, direct character movement, you'll see that the character's upper body still does the actions that we've triggered. So if you like, the upper body still does all the arm movement and the lower half of the body now does the walking. So we can hit record and send the character over here. And you can see his top half is still gesturing away. And in this way, you can get walking, talking characters. And this is really useful for when it comes to doing the musical instrument stuff um, later on. Because you can get characters walking around still holding a guitar. Okay, And with that, it's probably worth just uh, showing you some of the musical instrument stuff. As I say, there's another tutorial all about this elsewhere. So for a full description of how to do musical instrument animations, then you should look at that. But we apply a musical instrument at the character builder stage. Chip, instruments, let's give them, what's that? Bass guitar. So the next thing we'd have to do is prepare character actions and we'll find an empty slot and load up um, the bass poses. Okay, and into here we'll load up the bass strongs. So now when we come to direct character actions and hit record, we can call these musical instrument animations and it will all mesh up rather nicely. Some of them loop and some of them don't. What you should also be aware of, and this is almost a technicality, is that whenever you trigger an animation, let's just say you trigger a happy subtle or a happy strong animation, the character will perform that animation and then it will revert back to the idle state for that mood. And what you can see is that it's actually happened. I did a Queen clap with the bass guitar. He performed the animation and returned to be in the bass guitar mood, as it were. The same is true as if we went to... Um, or let's just direct this. Strong scared. He performed the strong scared and returned back to the scared idle, as shown here. Not so with poses. Poses are held, as you can see. Well, let's stop that. And that, I guess, is how you do character actions in Movie.